right? Just a quick example of how to fit uh, one of these S-shaped curves through the intermediate summaries of the psychometric um, data from your experiment. So this should work for any kind of data obtained in in one of those uh, two interval false choice experiments or yes no tasks uh, where you'd expect this sort of s-shape relationship between the stimulus variable and the response okay so i'm in SPSS here on my mac you should probably be able to do this on your windows machine as well so i'm going to start out with picking um, one of the text files one of the csv um, data files so double click on here um, you obviously need to navigate to where things are on your machine so I've made a copy of one of the data sets from uh, from your uh, pilot um, studies um, early on in the year they're saved as text data in the CSV format I'm selecting that here so this is what the intermediate summaries that we'll be producing will look like just open that um, just a couple of checks here the delimiter between values is comma everything is seems to be fine um, so I'm just going to press OK here and get this measurement in all right so looks like that's doing its job now one thing to watch out for here when you're reading these things in some of these um, columns will uh, contain NA not available data types which means it's going to turn your variables into um, a categorical, categorical text um, values which is not what we want to do so what you can do is you can change to the variable view and just make sure that the number of n bigger and proportion bigger um, are um, numerical data not string data so we need to make sure that's numerical and we need to make sure that the number of decimals is set to it's probably three or four shouldn't really make a difference uh, here the same numeric number of decimals okay. so, so if we go back to the data view we should now have something that is um, that we can deal with in the um, in our nonlinear regression which is the thing we're trying to do so I'm just gonna Rather than keep this untitled, I'm going to save that as uh, go back into the folder where we are. This is the example folder, so you have access to this later on as well. Let's be so stuff. Let's call it nonlinear regression example. Save that boy there. Okay, so there's no data in here, and that should still work fine. So, what I want to do is I want to go here and go to analyze and look for regression nonlinear. So this is um, nonlinear regression because we don't want to fit a line, a straight line through the data sets, but uh, sort of an equation. Which brings us to this uh, thing here. So here we have to decide what's the dependent variable and what's the model expression. So the dependent variable. Um, that we're trying to explain is p bigger right so that's the thing that we've been essentially measuring the proportion of, of bigger and that's the y values on the data so i'm going to put that in here for the model expression i'm going to use one of the function groups that's available here so um, i want um, cdf which stands for cumulative distribution functions and if you remember, one of the S-shaped curves that we can produce is a, a normal distribution, the cumulative version of that. Okay, so I'm just going to double click on that here. And it's going to prompt me for three inputs. The first one is actually going to be um, our independent variable. So the thing that's changing along the x-axis. So I can either pick W diff or W, and that should be the same, the sort of actually the columns that have the same numbers in them so I'm just going to pick the first one pick that guy put them in here and then I need to make space for two variables which are going to be called mu and sigma they're the mean and the standard deviation so I'm going to make put them in here type them in I'm going to just keep them capital so these will appear as the things that get actually estimated during the, the fitting procedure 
and those are the results that you then need to feed on feed into your um, um, ANOVA analysis that you want to do. Okay, so we need to help SPSS out. So we need to actually define those parameters here and give some starting values. So both of these uh, parameters that I've introduced, mu and sigma, I need to introduce them here and give starting points. So reasonable starting value for the mean is zero. We're expecting things to be centered around zero, but a little bit shifted maybe. And for sigma, a standard deviation, a good number might be one. Um, of course, um, so we need to add that too. Um, the fitting procedure will try and find out what are the best mu and sigmas to fit to the to the data set. Okay, um, just double checking here. Sum of squared residuals under the loss that seems fine. Um, constraints we don't really want to constrain the fitting procedure, but that's an option to do things here. For saving, we want to save out some predicted values, and maybe if you want to look at the residuals as well, you could do that too. So those are going to be columns that get saved back into your data sheet uh, afterwards. Um, and just to explore for some options. Um, you can look up the details here and see whether any of them are useful for you. But probably by, by the time you're going to do this for each of your um, psychometric curves that are collected under, uh, for each subject under two or three different conditions, you probably you don't want to uh, deal with this here. Okay? So if you press OK, then the fitting procedure should run. So it ran, ran pretty quickly on my machine here. Um, and what you are looking for is, so the, so here is the iteration history. So because it's not just a one-shot technique, um, the computer keeps, the algorithm keeps going around, around and around until it finds the best fitting mu and sigmas. And you can see how they evolve over time here as the algorithm finds the optimal point. And at some point it arrives at a, a mu of minus 1.344. That means the, this um, sigmoid curve has shifted a little bit towards the negative from zero, but that's actually quite a small amount. And the sigma is uh, related to the steepness of the psychometric curve. And the answer, the best fitting answer, is obviously not one, but around 5.6. And if you do this for each data set, you're going to have a pair of numbers that describe the shape of your uh, S-shaped curve. Okay, So you can go back here. Um, so these, you have now produced the predicted numbers as well, and you can either export these into Excel and make plots, which is probably a little bit more straightforward, or you could try and do these plots in, um, uh, in SPSS2. The important thing here is, though, the, the actual parameter estimates, and you might want to keep track of the standard error for these estimates too. And so if you do that for each of your summarized data sets across subjects, then you can produce um, um, the summary statistics from there. Uh, obviously, we want to see whether any of those numbers, the mu's and the sigmas, change consistently in an experimental condition. Right? So hopefully that's helped. So uh, I used a slightly different method and a different programming language called R to produce these fit numbers for mu and sigma and the predicted values and, and also the residuals, but the underlying technique is exactly the same. Right, hope that helps.